Hi everyone, Nimsha here from English Firm. Welcome back again. Uh, we'll be talking about one of the very important question types today. Also a question type which many people find a bit difficult relative to the other components. And the item is uh, reading fill in the blanks. It's also called drag and drop fill in the blanks. Because in this task, you will have a paragraph given on the screen. There will be blanks in the paragraph. There will be options at the bottom. You have to drag and drop the correct options into the correct blanks. So this item is mostly dependent on your grammatical skills, your vocabulary skills, and your understanding of the context of the passage, which is the reason why you should not expect many shortcuts in this, in this item type, because in some other question types, we can give you strategies, we can give you templates, we can give you very easy shortcuts. But this item, that is not the case. This actually needs your basic English skills, but we can give you some guidelines. But then again, I'm repeating again, these guidelines alone would not be enough for your preparation. This can help you to a certain extent, maybe around 70%, 80%. It can help you, but this alone would not be enough to tackle this question type. So the best way to improve your uh, fill in the blanks task in reading is to improve your basic English skills by reading articles or journals so that automatically your vocabulary will improve, your grammatical skills will improve. So that can help you a lot in this particular task. But still, there are some clues which I can give you. But again, that alone won't be enough. So let's go straight ahead with it. All right. So before we start, let's see where it stands in the important table, importance table. So the item that we are talking about today is reading fill in the blanks, also called drag and drop fill in the blanks. So this is the, I believe, 10th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. So this is the 10th important question in PTE out of all the 20 items. So it is carrying a total of 14.8 marks out of 90. You will be getting four to five paragraphs. And this 14.8 points is given only to your reading module. This item does not contribute any points to the other modules. It is contributing only points to reading because in this particular task, you don't listen to any audio, so no points for listening. You don't speak, so no points for speaking. You don't type, so no points for writing. You're only reading the paragraph given to you which is the reason why it is giving all the 14.8 points to reading itself. It doesn't contribute points to any other modules. So 14.8 points out of 90 is a really high score, which is which means this item is really important. So I'll just show you a sample screenshot of what it's going to look like. All right, so here, this is a sample screenshot of this item. As you can see, there's a paragraph on the screen. There are options at the bottom. All you have to do is drag and drop the correct options into the correct blanks. And if you notice here, the number of blanks are not equal to the number of options. You will always have more number of options given. Uh, so you cannot guess all of the answers here. It will be They are giving you more options, so it can be more confusing for you. So always the number of blanks will be lesser than the number of options. You just have to drag and drop each correct option into the correct blanks. And time management for reading module, I have already explained in the other reading components. Uh, but just to give a summary again, in reading module also, you will not be given specific time for each task. For all 15 questions, you get around 15 questions. You have multiple choice single answer, multiple choice multiple answer, reorder paragraphs, reading fill in the blanks, reading and writing fill in the blanks. You have five types of questions in reading, and this is the fourth type of question. And in these five types, multiple choice, single answer, you will be getting two to three items. Multiple choice, multiple answer, two to three items. Reorder paragraphs, two to three items. Reading fill in the blanks, the item that we are talking about today, four to five items. And reading and writing fill in the blanks, five to six questions. So all together in reading, you can get around 15 or 16 questions, sometimes 14 average 15 questions. And for all the 15 questions together, the computer will give you a total time. You are supposed to divide it among the questions. So if you get 15 questions, the computer will not be allocating specific time for each task. For all the 15 questions together, the computer could give you around 30 minutes time. So you have to divide it according to the importance of the question. So in reading module out of the five items, the most important one is reading and writing fill in the blanks where you should spend more time. Second important is reading fill in the blanks. Third important is reorder paragraphs. Multiple choice single answer and multiple choice multiple answer are relatively less important because they carry only very low score out of 90. Both of them combined together maximum 
five points out of 90. So what do you have to do? You have to do your multiple choice questions as quickly as possible, preferably within one to 1.5 minutes. So you can take at least two minutes for every reorder paragraph questions, two minutes for every reading fill in the blanks, minimum two minutes for every reading and writing fill in the blanks. So in this task, you have to finish one paragraph. You have to put the correct options in the correct blanks within two minutes time just so that you get enough time for every question type and it'll be given on the screen as well. So you can see, as you can see on the top right corner here, time remaining 21 minutes, eight of 18. That means you have a total of 18 questions and this is the eighth question you have remaining 21 minutes. So you need to manage accordingly so that you get a chance to answer every question. If you mismanage your time and if you waste too much time on the unimportant questions, you will not be getting enough time to answer every task. You will run out of time at the end and you, you might miss out the most important question, which is reading and writing fill in blanks. Not always, because again, like I said, in PT, they shuffle the order of questions. Sometimes you'll get multiple choice in the beginning. Sometimes you get fill in the blanks in the beginning. Whatever the order, do your multiple choice questions quickly so that you have enough time for the important question types. So for important questions, take around two minutes per question. So for this task, it can take two minutes per question. So in this section, you read a text up to 80 words, which has blanks in it. You drag words from a box and drop each word onto the correct blank to complete the text. You will be getting four to five questions and you, you will have around four to six blanks in each paragraph. The scoring is partial credit for each correctly completed blank. You get one point for each blank. There is no negative marking. That means even if you give a wrong answer for a particular blank, you won't get any minus one. You'll just get zero there. There is no negative marking here. And ideal amount of time, like I said, spend around two minutes for one paragraph. Do, do not take more than two minutes because if you take more than two minutes here, you will not get even two minutes for your reading and writing fill in the blanks or the questions which are yet to come. All right. And so the, like I said, so if there is a paragraph and options given to you like this, there are three skills which you need here. First, your grammatical skills should be strong. Second, your vocabulary should be strong. That means only if you know the meaning of the words given in the passage, as well as the options, you will know which word is matching to the passage. You should know the meaning. So only you know how to use it properly. Third is you need to understand the context of the passage because in some blanks, even if one word is grammatically correct, even if one word is meaningful, there will be a word which is more matching based on the context of the passage. So you need to use three things, grammar, vocabulary, and contextual clues. And also one more thing that you can do in the exam is what I've noticed is many of my students, when they practice with me, when they do it by themselves, like when they read it in their mind, they tend to make a lot of mistakes. And when they read it in a small voice out loud, they used to get better answers. That is probably because when you hear the sentence, you will understand it better. When you like, even if you put one blank in a particular place and if you read it out loud, you might get a better idea of the sentence. So the sound is giving you some sense. So you can use your sound as well. Even in the exam, you can read it in a small voice to understand it better. So there are four things now. First is grammar, then vocabulary, then contextual clues and use your sound to make sense. If it sounds good, if it, if it doesn't sound good, you can change the options. Okay. Now, what I can help you with here is grammar because gra for grammar, there are specific set of rules. So if you at least know the grammatical rules, even if you do not know the main meaning of the words given here, you can, you can find out the answer at least around 70 to 80% of the time. Because sometimes, even if I give you a grammar clue, there could be two or three options which is matching according to the grammar clue. Then you need to use the vocabulary skills. So what I can help you with this, I can help you with the grammatical clues, which you can, see, which you can use to a certain extent. Again, I'm telling you, it won't work 100% of the time because it depends on the passage context and vocabulary as well. Uh, but grammar can help you at least around 70 to 80 percent of the time. So let's go ahead and see how it looks. So here you can see these are the grammatical clues that we have. So first is of, by, and two words. Okay. So just a second. Sorry for the interruption again. So yeah, coming to the grammatical cues. So the first clue that you can see on the screen here, the words of, by, or two words will be mostly followed by a verb, which is ending with ing. So for example, he's heading two words. 
So two words, the previous word to that is heading. Heading is a verb which is ending with ing. Another example, she fell down by playing basketball. So by is followed by a verb again, which is ending with ing, playing. Playing is a verb which is ending with ing. So how you can use it in fill in the blanks is, if you have any of these words of by or towards, the answer, the blank previous to it or after it will be a verb which is ending with ing. So just go to the options and pick out any word which ends with ing form. Okay, now the second clue here is, before or after a verb, it will be an adverb. Adverb means words which describe a verb, how the action is done. Verbs are called action words and the words which describe the action is called adverb. So if you have a blank before or after a verb in your passage, choose an adverb. The adverb would be your answer and an easy way to figure out your adverb. Adverbs are qualifying an action and it usually ends with Y or ly so what you do is in the passage if you have a blank before or after a verb just go to the options and pick out the word which is ending with y or ly for example he is running quickly so the verb in this sentence is running quickly is the adverb as you can see quickly is ending with ly which is a clue for finding out your adverbs he is running quickly so if you have he is running dash go to the options and choose a word which is ending with y or by. Similarly, if you have a noun, subject or object, the blank before or after, before, usually before would be an adjective. So first you need to understand what a noun is. Noun are names of places, ideas, things, name of people, all these are nouns. So if there is a blank before a noun, the, it should be a word which is describing the noun, describing the characteristics of the noun, qualities of the noun. That is called an adjective. Words which describe a noun as an adjective. For example, here, he has blue eyes. So the noun here is eyes, the name of a thing, name of our a human body, name um, eyes. So the word which is describing eyes is blue. So blue is the adjective. So if you have a noun in your paragraph and there is a blank before it, choose a word which describes a noun, choose an adjective, which is a characteristic of the noun or a quality of the noun. For example, she has a beautiful bag. So bag is the noun, beautiful is the adjective, words like these. Now, the coming, op the coming clues are even more easier. If you have two and then a blank after two, Two will be mostly followed by a verb in the first form. I am going to study pottery. We'll never say I'm going to studying or studied. Uh, so two will be followed by first form of the verb without ing, without ed, without en, just the basic form of the verb study. I'm going to study pottery. He is practicing to play the piano. So if you have two in the passage given, the next word should be a verb in its first form without ed, without ing, without en, to study, to play, uh, to sing, to dance, okay? Not to dancing, to dance, that won't be grammatically correct. So if you have two and a blank next to it, choose a word in the first form, choose a verb, verb, verb means action words. Action words in the first form without ed, ing, or en. Now, is, are, was, where will be followed by Verb in the format of ing, ed, or en. Action word ending with ing, ed, or en. It could be any three of them. He is playing, he was playing, they were playing, they are playing. Could be a verb ending with ing. Similarly, it is consumed, it was consumed, they were consumed, they are consumed. So any of these could be an answer. Similarly, it is eaten, it was eaten, these are eaten, and these were eaten. Any of these should be correct. So if you have is, are, was, or were, choose a verb which is either ending with ing, ed, or en. It could be any three of them. Similar to that, if you have being followed by a dash, then the next word should be a verb which is either ending with ed or en. There are only two options here. Being will always be followed by verbs. Again, remember verbs are always action words. Food was being consumed, consumed for in ending with ed. Samples were being taken. So being will be followed by verb in the ed form or verb in the en form, consumed or taken. All right, similarly, 
could have. So what you can do, guys, whenever I'm explaining this, you can take a screenshot of this. So you can refer to it whenever you're practicing the questions. So that, because just learning these rules will not be enough. You need to use them in questions. Only then you will remember this. Only you will understand how to use them, okay? So keep a screenshot of these clues. There are around 10, 12 rules. Take a screenshot and use it when you practice questions. So you will remember them when you do this in the exam as well. Could have, would have will be followed by verb in the ED form or EN form, similar to being. Being, could have, would have will be followed by verb in the ED form or EN. Could have consumed, would have consumed, could have eaten, would have eaten, similar. Has been or have been will be followed by verb in the ING form, verb in the ED form, verb in the EN form. It could be any three of them. Has been playing, have been playing, has been consumed, have been consumed has been eaten, have been eaten, okay. Can be a bit confusing at first because I'm just explaining the rules. Only if you use this in questions, you'll understand better. So once we finish explaining these rules, I'll do a question for you so you'll understand. Similar, this is almost all of you will know. And, and is an article which is used for singular words, countable words, which are starting with vowels, mostly vowels, A, E, I, O, U. So if you have an and then a blank after it, choose an option which is either starting with A, E, I, O, U. Okay, starting with a vowel letter or starting with a vowel sound. Because for example, for words like university, union, even for them, even though it is starting with a U, we will not use an, it could start with A, A university. An university is grammatically wrong because when we say the word university, the sound is ya, Y sound. It's not U sound, okay? So an can be used for words starting with vowels as well as words sounding with vowels. Similarly, is will be followed by a singular word. Almost all of you will know it. R will be followed by a plural word. And the last rule, subject, verb, object. This is the active voice of sentences. Most sentences that you see in the paragraph will be in the active voice. And active voice will be following the structure, subject, verb, object. So subject is the one who is doing the action, verb is the action being done, and object is the one on, on which the action is done. So subject almost all the time will be nouns, verb will be actions, object also will be most of the time nouns. So if you have a subject, dash, and object, then the middle word should be an action word. Similarly, if you have a dash, verb, and object, the first word should be a subject. Subject means it should be a noun. Also, subject, verb, dash, the last word should be an object. Object also mostly will be nouns. For example, Noah, dash, music lessons. So the middle word should be a verb. For example, attends. Noah takes music lessons or Noah attends music lessons. Okay, so Noah, dash, music lessons. Noah is a noun. Music lessons is a noun. So the middle word should be a verb. Similarly, if you have dash attends music lessons, the first word should be a subject or a noun. Subject are mostly nouns, name of people, name of a thing, name of a country. It could be any noun in the beginning. So most of the time, the sentence structure format would be noun, verb, noun. So if we have noun dash noun, the middle word will be a verb. If we have dash verb noun, the first word will be a noun. If you have noun verb dash, the last word will be a noun. <laughs> and it can be very confusing for you. So please watch the videos again and again. Or better yet, take a screenshot of these rules and try to use them when you solve your fill in the blanks questions. So let me do just one question with you. So yeah, you can all read this question. You can post the audio and read it. Post the video and read it. I'll also read it with you. Considering their lingering reputation as man killers, it's hardly surprising that hackles are raised Anytime someone brings up the idea of dash wolves to the Scottish Highlands. One more thing, guys, I forgot to mention. Many people make a mistake here of reading only the part with the blank. Please make sure if you have the time, preferably have enough time here, spend less time on multiple choice questions so you can take more time here. Have enough time to read the entire paragraph because the contextual clues you will understand only if you read the entire paragraph. If you read only the part with the blank, you will not get the complete idea. So read the entire paragraph. If it is too long, then it's okay. Yeah, read at least the part with the blank, the sentence with the blank, and the sentence before it and after it at least. 
which is now here first sentence is considering the linkedin reputation as mancular it's hardly surprising that hackers are raised any time someone brings up the idea of votes to the scottish highlands so the clue here is off now if you go back to a grammar clues what was the first clue of by or to words will be followed by a verb ending with the ing form so of the next word should be a word a verb which is ending with ing so let's look at the options so how many options do we have ending with ing we have two reacquainting and reintroducing this is why i said grammar alone won't be enough because using your grammar clues we have we can narrow down to two options we can at least know it is reacquainting or reintroducing now to figure out which is the correct option out of these two you need to know the meaning of the word and you need to know which word is more matching to the context of the passage so the context of the passage here is bringing wolves to a particular place bringing wolves to scottish highlands so they are reintroducing wolves to scottish highlands reacquainting will not be matching to the context here because reacquainting is usually used in in for people we reacquaintance is a person you know someone you know but you're not close enough it's not we cannot say a friend someone you who you know from work something like that so he is an acquaintance so she is an acquaintance so reacquainting means you can show someone you know to another person but here we are talking about wolves we are not talking about people so for wolves we cannot use the word reacquainting we can say reintroducing wolves to the scottish highlands so there are two basic skills that are used here first i use grammar to figure out it should be a word ending with ing second i used vocabulary meaning and which our word is matching to the context which is reintroducing okay someone brings up the idea of reintroducing wolves to the scottish highlands now the second sentence debate on this topic has been raging for years dash would like to see the highland environment return to its natural state so when we say there is a debate going on there should be two groups okay so two groups means a group who is supporting it and a group who is against it so the group who is supporting it can be one uh, the one look who would like to see the highland environment return to natural state and opponents are the group who is against it okay so the clue here is there is a debate there are two groups one is opponents so the other one should be proponents you can also think of activists here because activists is grammatically correct here because they said dash would like to see would like to see is a verb so we have dash verb noun so the first word also should be a noun here which is our last clue subject verb object so we have sub we have dash verb object in the in the se sentence that we are talking about now so the first word should be a subject subject always will be a noun here so we have only two nouns in the options given we have proponents as well as activist so either of them are grammatically correct but the more appropriate one here is proponents because the clue in the next sentence is opponents and the previous sentence also mentioned a debate so debate should have two sides proponents as well as opponents which is the reason why the second blank the correct answer should be proponents not activists activists is grammatically correct but the passage is talking about a debate so we have to choose proponents here and the next sentence opponents dash the animals again subject dash object so the next word should be a verb as well so how many verbs do we have remaining reintroducing we already used reacquainting we cannot use because it should be a verb in the first form it should be if it is reacquaint we should be we should if it is reacquainting we should have the verb form reacquaint which which doesn't exist reintroduce it can be correct but both are in the ing form which is not matching here propensity is not a verb proponents is not a verb activist is not a verb accuse is a verb cite is a verb so here the correct word is cite opponents cite the animals cite means they state that they state that it is the animals dash for killing livestock now you can see another clue here opponents apostrophe opponents apostrophe sorry animals apostrophe that means it is a characteristic for the a characteristic of the animals so the correct answer would be animals propensity propensity meaning is natural tendency now here you would be able to choose propensity only if you know the meaning of the word see to solve this question i used all three i used grammar i used vocabulary i used contextual clues as well that is why i'm saying grammar clues alone will not be enough 
uh, you need to know your uh, vocabulary you need to understand the context of the passage so use all three to solve these questions okay so i'll just repeat the answers here again first one is reintroducing second one is opponent a proponents would like to see the highland genuine return to its natural state and the third one is opponent cite opponent say that they state that opponent cite the animals propensity for killing livestock okay so i believe uh, this can help you at least to a certain extent at least using the grammar clues so all of you can use these grammar clues which i has mentioned here but again read the context read the entire passage completely don't read only part of it uh, because the contextual clues you can understand only if you read the entire passage improve your vocabulary skills by reading articles or journals improve your grammatical skills at, or at least use the grammatical clues given here as i said please go back to the video pause it and take a screenshot of those and use it while you solve questions and like i say all the time if you have any doubts or questions regarding any items of pt feel free to comment in the comment section all right so thank you guys i'll be seeing you again with another video soon until then bye bye and keep practicing